One of the hosts on The View was not happy with comedian Jon Stewart's recent coverage of Biden's very obvious mental decline. We all see it. I state your name. Very obvious mental decline. We all see it. And uh, even went so far as to call that kind of criticism ableist. And she's very offended <laughs> by it. These politics kind of worked several years ago. Do you really think so? No one cares how offended you are anymore. We can all see what everyone grounded in reality can see. Biden is struggling. Biden is Biden is struggling. It's not that he's Biden is Biden is struggling. It's not it's not that he's old. It's that his no all one right. cares how offended you are anymore. God save we can the all queen, see man. what everyone grounded in reality can see. Biden is struggling. Biden is Biden is struggling. It's not that he's Biden is Biden is struggling. It's not it's not that he's What are we doing? What are we What are we doing? Old. It's that his mental capacity has been diminished. It is very clear to people. And what are we doing? Jake like we're to, we're just mo going along going along with things. Like the the country is just moving along, moving along as if as if what are we doing? What are we what are we doing? President of the United States isn't like old. It's that President of the United States isn't like the most important job in the country slash world. Yeah. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we what are we doing? Everyone grounded in reality can see. Biden is struggling. Biden is Biden is struggling. It's not that he's Biden is Biden is struggling. It's not it's not that he's old. It's that that his 
mental capacity has been diminished. It is very clear to people and we're talking about, what are we doing? What are we, what are we doing? Well, television is a propaganda box. And so if you said, hey, uh, about um, a politician or political figure that's doing pretty well in their 80s, I think Bernie Sanders is doing well. He seems like he's in good shape. Too or old, according to the same Democrats who are now saying that Biden is not too old. On the other hand, how about if we said it about Dianne Feinstein? In fact, I did say it about Dianne Feinstein. They said <laughs> And the propagandists on television told you, no, don't believe your lying eyes. Dianne Feinstein is an amazing senator from California. Wonderful, we should not take her away. No way, until she finally just keeled over. But we were being ageist. Okay. And sexist and, and whatever blah, 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 ist or blah, ism blah, 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 they could throw blah. at you to silence you. And I'm sick of that tactic. I'm yeah. sick of that tactic. Do you guys, I mean, I've said this before on the show. I'm gonna say it again. And I'm gonna keep repeating it. The labeling someone one of the isms to intimidate them and silence them and prevent them from saying things you don't wanna hear. It's a tired tactic at this point and it's not working. Oh dear, it seems that I have accidentally done a flip. And it, it almost always used by the elites. Always. And yeah, always. And, and, and the people that use it most against is sure, right wingers, okay? You must be joking. But second is progressives. No, they use it all over right. the place, Cenk. It's all over the place. It's directed at anyone who says anything they don't like. It, right, it, it, the powerless, let's put it that way. Yeah. If you're among the powerful, no, 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 they are protected by the isms. If you're the powerless, you're the isms. Okay. In my opinion, half the Republican base is deplorable. And and I think they are racist, bigots, sexist, etc. We could talk half, about it. half, easily half. Okay, but the other half—that's forty million people in America. Absolutely, you not believe, even close. You believe that? A hundred percent. We could debate it. So you're the isms. In my opinion, half the Republican base is. I think they are racist, bigots, sexist, etc. If you're the powerless, you're the isms. Okay. So look, last thing on the H uh, in in terms of the specific examples that Sonny hosting. Sonny Hostin. Sonny hosting. Sonny Hostin. Sonny Hostin. Sonny Hostin. If she gave Slater said, "There's uh, people who are old who are just still doing great, like Nancy Pelosi." <laughs> Have you guys seen Nancy Pelosi on TV lately? Yeah, she's a hot yeah. mess. She's a disaster. She is a disaster. But look, yeah, she is okay. But anyway, uh, I do want to get back to John Stewart, who also, to be fair, happens to be powerful in his own right. Right? He's a, he's part of the yeah, elite. Yeah, but that's part of why they're so mad at him. They're right. like the elites have a club. And there's only one rule in the club, never attack anyone else in the club. Whereas John Stewart is saying, don't blame the voters, and they have a right to pick the best candidate. They're like, whoa, 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 Okay, we don't like either one of those talking points. No, our job is to blame the voters and yell at them and say you're never allowed to criticize Biden, right? And here's John Stewart criticizing him through comedy. Did you ever see me back for twenty dollar bill on weed? Oh, there's some weird shit in there, man. There's a dude sitting in the bushes, man, does he have a gun? I don't know, man, I don't know. What, what, red team go, red team go. That's a breach of etiquette, John, bad boy. Now, funny enough, John Stewart addressed people like Sonny Hostin during his, uh, you know, his daily show segment. He said, one, two, one, two, three. And by the way, I'm actually deeply, deeply offended that the Olympics refuses to allow me to compete in rhythmic gymnastics. It offended ageism. Ageism. And then he called her an old chicken. It, no, it's ableism. I mean, I am not able to do rhythmic gymnastics. That's also true. A lot of isms in there. Ageism. It's ableist totally. and ageist, okay? Yep. Uh, ageist. Like the view has become some weirdo scolds where they just go around like if anyone dares to challenge the powerful, the the ladies of the view come back. <laughs> bow your head, bow your head and obey the powerful. Wow, what a great show, chit chat. Which of the powerful should it be? Oh, which whose ass should we kiss? Who's gonna give us a tax break? We're all millionaires. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to mention that. Like they're telling you, don't believe your lying eyes.
Okay. I know it's insulting. I'm offended at how insulting they are in regard to our own intelligence and our ability to be grounded in reality. I think they're being smartest. It's not funny. They're they're discriminating against smart people who, and they're also being. Uh, they're discri they're discriminating visionist. People who have vision, they're being discriminatory against us. Did you notice Rachel Maddow going, he, he can ride a bike, he, he's, he can ride a bike, he can ride a bike. We got, we're okay, we're okay. Good job. Rachel. MSNBC, Good job. yeah, team Democrats, Democrats, Democrats. They're all great, they're all wonderful, none of them are old. And Democrats, none of them work for the Democrats. Democrats at all, at all. They're so pure as a driven snow. Democrats, they're just the most Democrats. wonderful angelic people we have ever met. Boo, Republicans, Democrats, look at their donors. Democrats. Coke brothers and Adel Cinco donors. Democrats, they don't have any donors, they're angels, angels. Delivered to us from the sky, they can bike, they can bike. They can bike, they can bike. Now go home and smoke some more crack. We're good, we're good. All right. Let's talk, let's talk about, let's talk about. They can bike, I, they can bike. Is that, is that how you bike? Yeah. Like that, okay, okay. I mean. So you're the isms. Okay, and I'm sick of this age. Democrats. Sonny Hostin of The View was just one of the chorus of people in the media who were outraged that Jon Stewart used his first appearance back on The Daily Show to attack Joe Biden over his age. Ageism. Now, uh, thankfully, Stewart didn't stand down on last night's edition of The Daily Show, and we're gonna get to that in just a moment, because he did in fact uh, hit back at some of the most outlandish attacks against him. Quote, I have sinned against you, I'm sorry. It was never my intention to say out loud what I saw with my eyes and brain. Love I gotta guy. say, I do, I do. The gaslighting is what really gets under my skin, right? We're crazy. And is anyone really gonna argue that Biden's 81 year age is not impacting him? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. So this is why Come I love on. John Stewart. It gets right to the point. So you guys don't want to have a discussion about who's the best candidate to beat Trump. Well, why wouldn't we want to have that discussion? Then maybe we could pick the best candidate. No, let's pick the candidate that, that uh, is honestly the worst candidate. Why? Because shut up. That's the Democratic position is shut, shut up. up. Have you looked in a mirror lately? If you ever criticize Democratic leadership, are the ones that are like, you better not say anything. The job of the media is to propaganda and only propaganda. Why? Because shut up. You better not say anything. Why? Because shut up. Oh, did we have a heretic? John Stewart is a heretic. Why? Because shut up. He's daring to say things that are not just purely propaganda in favor of Democratic leadership. You better not say anything. Why? Because shut up. And I'm really sad to see that it's also impacted, you know, progressive outlets, leftist outlets who think that calling certain policies into question. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example, the whole you know migrant crisis thing and how a group of migrants in New York City were on film beating up cops. People were outraged that I had the audacity to even cover that story. Like, why are you covering that story? You're not, you're not playing fair for the team. Shut up. That's the reason why we have two different groups of people now who see reality entirely differently. Yeah, so look, we fought against both sidesms for the whole 22 years we've been here. But so are the Republicans worse on almost every issue? I think they are racist, bigots, sexist, etc. Yes, but on issues where the Democrats are wrong, are we supposed to lie? Is does John Stewart says something that's true. Hurry up, don't attack him, attack him, attack him. No, Biden's not anyone. Uh, Biden looks great, he's super young, he's, he's the best. Everybody say he looks super young, everybody say he looks super young. No, he's Trump, who's old, he's Trump. All right, you look like an idiot and a maniac, okay? But if you're asking us to kiss Biden's ass, no deal. I know that breaks your heart that we won't do propaganda for him. But go ahead, cry. <laughs> Why won't they lie? Why are they saying the actual news? That's not what we do. Shut up.
Biden has turned down a televised interview with CBS's news division during the Super Bowl. Meaning that he has. Declined. Declined. Oh, thank you, Inspector Obvious. Okay, he has declined. Declined. The chance to speak to Americans during television's most watch hours during an election year. Which I think is insane. And not only is this a missed opportunity that could be beneficial to Biden's campaign, it's also apparently something that breaks with tradition. So in a tradition dating back to 2009, presidents have recorded an interview with the network that broadcast the Super Bowl, although there have been exceptions. For instance, Donald Trump did not appear on NBC in 2018. And then last year, Biden declined to appear on Fox. Deciding that he doesn't want to do that interview with Fox, during last year's Super Bowl? Totally fine. Now, as you can imagine, Biden's presidential election opponent, Donald Trump, used this as an opportunity to attack Biden while also challenging him to something Biden should absolutely do. So let's watch. When he doesn't do the Super Bowl deal, which would be a great opportunity, actually, this would be a good time. You don't always have to do them, but this would be a good time not to, to you know, to stay to stay right in somebody's face, especially when you have those kind of numbers, but he can't do it. Because he can't talk, he can't do anything. He's ruining our country, and I don't think he's going to run. And I don't know if it's donors or otherwise. It might be his family. It might be something. I don't think he's yeah. going to run. But I'd like to yeah. call for immediately debates. I'd like to debate him now because we should debate. We should debate for the good of the country. Okay, number one, Biden's running. I was also in the camp of thinking, no, 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 this this can't be the case. There's no. I mean, he's incredibly vulnerable. He's gonna drop out. I mean, he looks at his approval rating, he sees how vulnerable he is, even up against Donald Trump. Poll after poll shows how vulnerable Joe Biden is. There's no way Come he's gonna on, run. Man. No, he's running. So let's get that out of the way. Biden absolutely should debate him. Like, what what are we talking about here? Like, is there really any question about whether there should be a presidential debate during the general election? Like, what? Not having that debate, I think, would be ludicrous. Hey, ludicrous. That's a pretty big way. <laughs> but I do think the way he's speaking in response to what Trump is challenging him to kind of proves a little bit of what Trump said during that interview. So let's watch Biden's response, and then I'll tell you what I mean. I read what you said to you immediately. Immediately? Yeah. Uh -huh. Will you debate I, him? I, I, I might want to debate me too. I think I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> but that wasn't really an own. <laughs> okay, if you're responding from a place of strength, you say, Oh no, it's on. We're going to be debating. He doesn't need to worry about that, right? Oh, I would want to debate me too. What does that mean? Like what? Like what? And Trump would want to debate Biden because it's going to make Trump look good. No, don't respond in that way. That's not trolling Trump. Like what? At his rally, he jokes about an intruder whipped up by the big Trump lie, taking a hammer to Paul Pelosi's skull and echoing the very same words used on January 6th. Where's Nancy? And he thinks that's funny. He laughed about it. What a sick. <laughs> My God. During his speech at Valley Forge last month, marking the third anniversary of the January 6th insurrection, Joe Biden stopped short of saying how he truly feels about Donald Trump. Profane description, sure. Accurate. Also, yes. But to me, this just seems relatable. I think that this makes him look better. <laughs> At least to the public to some extent. The two of our members just took the words right out of my mouth. Gay, gay, gay. Okay, I kind of like Biden a little bit more now that I know he swears like a sailor. 
I totally agree. I, uh, uh, it's true we do do our show with our members. It's true we do do we do do. Uh, it's all fake. Everything is fake, right? Including you. Uh, there's nothing wrong with saying it. Why do you believe this dumb, dumb idea? The Democrats, all the Democrats, that Republicans should rip your face off and the Democrats should be gentlemen, should wear white gloves, play by Queensbury Rose. I do declare we missed badminton time. Your voice needs to come off as elegant as your clothing, okay? So try this. <clears throat> Would you like a spot of tea? You. Yes. Come on, guys. Just say it. God damn it, say it. What is wrong with you guys? They're stuck in the 1970s and 90s. And we should be civil to one another. Oh, I do declare the rapscallion Republicans have done it again. Yes. Have we got here a pair of poofs? Good <laughs> Jesus Christ, get in the fight! Get in the fight, okay? But in public, Joe Biden has so much trouble actually criticizing Republicans. It's like the most painful thing in the world to him. And he's like, a mega bad, but I love Republicans. Oh, Mitch McConnell, where are you? Let's cut taxes again for the rich, right? So he can't get himself to say it in public, plus, it's a dumb, dumb strategy. So instead, they leak it to the press so that Biden looks like a tough guy without actually having to be a tough guy. I think that strategy is pathetic. If you're gonna do it, do it. If you're not, shut up, go home, and you should have let someone else run. Uh, the Trump campaign absolutely uh, did respond because they would never miss an opportunity to, to have a petty moment. Because if you're they gonna would do, never it, do it, miss if an you're opportunity not, to, shut up, to go have home, a petty you should let someone else run. <laughs> Remember when he talked about his penis on a debate stage? Penis? <laughs> We're talking about disrespecting the office of the president. Get out of here. MAGA, never ever say the word penis, respect, or pretend that your guy is a gentleman or civil. Because you sound more insane than you normally do. Every time you say that, the rest of us laugh and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these idiots <laughs> pretending that Trump was a civil gentleman. I mean, of all the penis. <laughs> we regret to inform you that today Ben Shapiro has done something truly awful. Maybe the worst things to come out of his mouth yet. He's a rapper now. <laughs> these are truly horrifying times for us all. Uh, for copyright reasons, we won't be playing Shapiro's part of the song, but here are the lyrics to his verse, which I will do in my best Shapiro voice. Let's look at these stats. I've got the facts. My money like Lizzo, my pockets are fat. Homie, I'm epic. Don't be a wop. Dog, it's a yarmulke. Homie, no cap. Look at the graphs. Look at my charts. You're blowing money on strippers and cars. You're going to prison. I'm on television, dog. No one knows who you are. Keep hating on me on the internet. My comment section, all woke Karens. I make racks off compound interest. Y'all live with your parents. Nikki, take some notes. I just did this for fun. All my people download this. Let's get a billboard number one. Yeah, and you know what? I actually think that Ben's version should go to number one on Billboard. Let's yeah. make it happen, folks. <laughs> download it, upload it, then download it. Your hoodie player. <laughs> uh, I like Ben's voice, Ben Glebe's voice of Ben Shapiro better than I like Ben Shapiro's. Please voice. dub my lyrics of it over <laughs> him doing it on the track and upload that somewhere. That would be amazing. That's awesome. Let's try that. Uh, okay. Let's look at these stats, I've got the facts. My money like Lizzo, my pockets are fat. Homie, I'm epic, don't be a wop. Dog, it's a yarmulke, homie, no cap. Look at the graphs, look at my charts. You're blowing money on strippers and cars, you're going to prison. I'm on television, dog, no one knows who you are. Keep hating on me on the internet. My comment section, all woke Karens. I make racks off compound interest. Y'all live with your parents. Nikki, take some notes. I just did this for fun, all my people download this. Let's get a billboard, number one. As much as he said he hated rap, of course he was gonna rap at some point. You know why? Because the right wing also wants to be cool. That's why they always say like, oh, liberal Hollywood, we hate them. Oh my God, Ted Nugent's on our side. <laughs> That's the best you got? And they're like, oh yeah, and Angelina Jolie's dad. Uh, pencil. Hey, you don't think, sure, that's John Voight's pencil. And James Woods, and I hear he has a penis. <laughs> 
like they get so excited anytime the tiniest little stars on their side. But what I think was interesting is as I listened to the song, and yes, I did, I'm a real journalist, okay? I'm a real journalist, okay? okay. Uh, I, two things stuck out at me, and it, and it goes towards the right wing mindset. Um, they said over and over again, and it's in the picture, and the guy's wearing it in the sweatshirt, the main rapper dude, whatever it is, at McDonald's or Burger King or whatever his name is. <laughs> uh, and he says, I don't care if I offend you. That, that's such a right wing way of thinking, right? Because sometimes I offend people, but you know what? I care. Uh, so. <laughs> After Jake oh, yeah. and I yell at each other, we hug each other. He hugs me, he feels so bad. <laughs> That's true, okay? So, and then the second thing that I thought was the worst actually is near the end of the song, they explain, oh yeah, you people and this and that and all the people on that are libs and on that side and then they go, and I'm a man and I don't respect you. Well, all right, brother. I mean, then if, like, if you're gonna go at it with that attitude, then you can't be bothered when we don't respect you. So, but if you ever criticize right wingers, you'll see they get super touchy. Like if you say, "Hey, MAGA's deplorable," like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, dare you? they lose it, start throwing feces on the wall and stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't respect you there. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, anyways, we're having Kang too serious a conversation about the freaking rap. Okay, and, and its quality. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to take over the charts like he's some kind of anti-hero. Taking over Taylor Swift, now it's Ben Shapiro. Oh, oh not bad, not bad. Okay, but you gotta work bitch in there. That part, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> After Jake and I yelled at each other, we hug each other. He hugs me, he feels so bad. <laughs> That's true, okay, so. Lunch. Oh. Usual. Hey guys, we can turn this day around with a spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich starts with a tender whole filet in our. Joining us now is Jake Uger, who's uh, currently running in the Democratic primary for President of the United States. Uh, so, Jake, it's been a while since we've talked, and yep. I'm sure there's lots of updates. So. I'm Jank Uger and I'm running for president. And I'm gonna lose. It seems less and less likely that um, you know your primary run is gonna go anywhere. So what are your plans? I'm gonna lose. So uh I think that your analysis is uh fair. Uh <laughs> and so let, let me explain. Because you know me, Anna, I'm an eternal optimist and I always try to look for okay, yes, but what are we gonna do next that's positive, mm -hmm. that gives people hope, right? So I realized I'm gonna lose. Oh my God, I'm on the presidential ballot in seven different states. And you know, I was mad that they uh, stopped including me in the polls, right? Like, put a <laughs> on the poll, I got to 2%. <laughs> it was actually the first poll they did uh, with me in it. That's the equivalent of 1.6 million Democratic voters saying, yeah, I want that guy to be president of the United States. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my campaign into a message campaign. Now, I'm super realistic about it, both in terms of the potential for winning, which is tiny at this point, right? And but I'm gonna lose. And also even the idea of getting a message out, that's also very difficult, right? For example, they tried to write in ceasefire in New Hampshire, and it got a lot of votes, and I and I got a lot of votes. So I, and I got a lot of votes. Are you sure about that? And then they didn't report it. They just put, said 10,000 votes that were written in, but we're not gonna tell you who they were. Total? Total. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that I came in third. No, no, not possible. Not possible. So now I'm going to try to do something audacious as I always do, which is to try to win Vermont. Okay. It would be the first time a naturalized citizen got a delegate for president. That would be historic and amazing. You could make that happen. I'm going to lose. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. And this is, I get that it's funny, guys. I get that I don't have the power to do this. Okay. That'll be great. <laughs> okay. Jankforamerica.com. <laughs> A few moments later. Joining us now is Democratic presidential candidate Cenk Uger, who has been running in the Democratic primary and has a big announcement to share with us. Cenk. I am suspending my campaign. I am suspending no! my campaign. Take the power back. Ah! Anos for the win. I'm going to lose. Next week is the annual State of the Union address, and as Biden and his team prepare, 
Some of the most well-known progressive Democrats are urging him to use the opportunity to call for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. Obviously, we're gonna have disagreements on this issue. I already disagree with at least one thing that Ben said. Netanyahu has said very, very clearly he will not end it. He is definitely going to attack Rafa. It's just a matter of when. Well, that's now, not what I said. I said return the hostages and for Hamas to lay down its weapons. That would end the war immediately. Yeah, okay, oh, by the way. Uh, I think uh, here we go again. Hamas constantly sends rockets and constantly has on the ground terror attacks. When I was there for ten, just ten days, Nothing. over 170 rockets, nine on the ground terror attacks. Never. People died. That needs to be abandoned. You can't ask oh, only Israel okay. to accept a life forever. No, of, of, I just told you attacked. I accept. If India told me, hey, by the way, I'm going to starve 500,000 Tamils because of the Tamil Tigers, and I'm going to murder 30,000 of them, 10,000 maybe fighters, 20,000 women and children. I'm going to murder them because they're being terrorists to me. I got Got it, no. But we agree and My on answer that. is no. We agree on that. No, no, don't do that. We agree. That is inhuman, that is immoral, that is indecent in every way, shape, and form. We agree on that. So, no, you don't, Ben, you're still saying do it. No, I'm you're saying, saying make sure forward. all aid is there. That not, doesn't mean you abandon the stop mission. Stop killing them, you must. No, you're right to defend yourself left months ago, months ago, That's months ago. Months ago, That's now an we're insane just slaughtering. That's an insane we're just statement. slaughtering, no, slaughtering, that's slaughtering. Not true. They still haven't gotten into Rafa. Why? Because they're waiting to make sure it can be done. In that yes, it seems probably whoever's operating those tanks messed up horribly and killed innocent people. But you can't ignore that there is a long history of people who are either civilians or dressed as civilians blowing themselves up. With suicide vests, you can't ignore that because that explains the extreme nervousness to having them approach tanks. You have to at least share that fact. No, uh, all right, I don't at all. This is, it sounds like the Turks, uh, which I've experienced my whole life. So I know about blind bias, okay? It sounds like Turks- But it's a fact what I just said, so why is it blind? Uh, hold on, justifying the Armenian genocide. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. The Christian ministry missionaries tricked them. So many Turks died. I know people who died. We had to kill them. We had a well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians fight to defend ourselves. So we killed and killed and killed and we wouldn't stop killing. We wouldn't stop killing and we had to move. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. Move them and move them and move them and kill them and kill them. And we had a right to defend ourselves, goddamn terrorists. I know people who died. We, the Christian ministry missionaries tricked them. So many Turks died. I know people who died and I know and I know people who died. We had to kill them. We had a right to defend ourselves. So we killed and killed and killed. We killed and killed and killed. And we wouldn't stop. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. We killed and killed and killed. We killed and killed and killed. And we wouldn't stop killing. We wouldn't stop killing. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. Well, they hit us from behind or they were helping the Russians. And we wouldn't stop killing. We wouldn't stop killing. And we had to move them and move them and move them and kill them and kill them. We had a right to defend ourselves, goddamn terrorists. That is and exactly what killed? Turks say. Netanyahu says, there's no way I'm gonna end the occupation. And Hamas says, if there's no way you're gonna end the occupation, there's no way we're gonna stop fighting. No, that's the reverse order. Hamas says they will never allow Israel to exist and then do October 7th. Okay, and then he says, well, in question. response, the two state solution is currently dead because you're promising to kill us. Yeah, that's no, not a partner for peace. Yeah, that's yeah. the correct order. But if we have this idea that, hey, Hamas lays down their weapons, every Palestinian just simply stops fighting altogether forever and ever and says, okay, please, we're at your mercy, we're at your feet, which I guess Netanyahu and the right wingers would love. Yeah, broken people, they are broken completely. Does, do to they, hold on, broken people, hold on, Jake, hold on, why do you make that leap though? Yeah, committing okay, to well, peace hold is on, will Israel lay down people. their weapons? Go ahead, Israel, lay down your weapons. Why, why? would you do that? Why? Their, That's insane. Their response is in response again. Oh, in response to Israel fighting. 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 Officers, 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 it's in response to a 75 year occupation where they've been imprisoned by this occupier oppressor, this Israeli government where that was supposed to be a safe haven. One. A safe haven for Jews has turned into a giant oppressor attacked, of 5 million because people. Because they were attacked on day one no, by all insanity. the countries around. So this is my proof, Palestinian Authority has completely surrendered. That's why they have no credibility at all. They the fund the terrorists. And so West They Bank, pay the terrorists. The that's Palestinian okay with you. Authority, they're the most yeah. impotent. They pay the like, terrorists. They're the softest people While in the world. While paying people they are to kill collaborators Israelis. with the occupiers. While paying and people. And they still 
get nothing. The wild, settlers slaughter their people, wild, and they sit there like fools. Wild, yes, Israel, please slaughter because our people. Because you don't people mind them slaughter. paying terrorists then, to kill my and, people. And, and has you don't Israel, care. No, has Israel then said, hey, since these are our dogs here in the Palestinian Authority, we now free the West Bank. No, usually no. Dogs, more usually settlements, dogs more murder. don't fund to kill the people no. that use their dogs. They don't fund the murder of them. Okay. And ben, Hamas is in ben, the West Bank. You're pretending that the Palestinians are occupying the Israelis, oppressing the Israelis. Israelis are the tiny little victims. Israel has a giant military. They are occupying five million people, keeping them as prisoners, and never letting go of the occupation. Because and they then constantly saying, how dare promise they to us? murder them. How dare? When the, because you know what Hamas they constantly is promise to murder you know, them. Hamas and Israel have the same exact slogan. We have a right to defend ourselves. Yeah. Okay. But so not to initiate murder. Yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. how it ends. Israel Stop has where well, you can murder. see that Israel has murdered so many more innocent Palestinians than any Palestinian terrorist has murdered Israelis. I will concede that in response to murder in and response, terror. And the Palestinians did it in response to your occupation for 75 goddamn years. How long can, will you stay prisoner? Look, do you want me when to say, would we all, killing. Would, would, would we all, if we were Palestinians or any other people, would we all bow our heads? What do you think I would do? <laughs> would you, if the Israelis were occupied, if Jews were occupied, do you think you'd go there? Oh yes, my occupier, my German occupier. I love you. I want peace. I beg you. I'm your dog. Would I expect that of Jews? No way. I would. No way. I would want Jews to fight yes, back. We've made I would peace want with Germany, to help the but Jews not fight true. Back. We've made peace with Germany, and now they're an ally of Israel. And they support Israel. Yes, we would do that because we're able to move on from the past and live in a peaceful future. Well, that's the end. Just the factual, historical, current, true answer. So you can yell about it, but that's what so we do. So the Jews had no right to defend themselves in Germany. Did they decide after and during the Holocaust, we now for the rest of time are gonna murder all Germans and never acknowledge their right to exist or have a country because they killed all of us? No, you move on, you yeah, move forward. This is why I'm pushing for peace Ditto. with your enemy. Same That's who you here. make peace with like Same Egypt. Here. And, like, and how you do it? When they promise to stop killing, but you cannot. But Israel make will stop promising to keep imprisoning, occupying, oppressing, because humiliating, killing, murdering Palestinians. Kill them. Because the oh, other side endless. keeps you promising to kill. No, right, it's not. Go. No, we well, go. no, no. But Jenk, it's not. Starts with promise of murder from the Palestinian well, side. If that total ends, utter it ends. Nonsense. So they're not. They're they're terrible human beings. Ben Gavir, Netanyahu, all those guys. They're the worst human beings on planet Earth, and they say no. We are going to prison and humiliate these people and starve them to death. Please, I'm begging you, get rid of the monster. I, I Please, I'm begging you, he didn't protect you. All he cares about is protecting himself. Yes. You have to go towards peace and Hamas, please release the hostages. For God's sake, make a deal, make a deal, release the hostages. And look, I know that Netanyahu's gonna go back to slaughtering you. But what happens is you bought six weeks and maybe, maybe, maybe in those six weeks, cooler heads can prevail. And maybe Qatar and Saudi Arabia can bribe America enough to get to a peace deal. So America pushes, pushes, pushes so that they can get an election in Israel. Otherwise, we're never gonna get the peace. Right. We're gonna go, you started, you started, you started, and it's you started, you started, you started, and it's never, oh, you wanna kill us, you wanna kill us, you wanna kill us, you wanna kill us, you started, you started, you started, and it's you wanna kill us, you wanna kill us, and it's never gonna end. You have to push towards peace, release the hostages, and for God's sake, get rid of Netanyahu. If you don't do that, there's no chance. Don't do that to but Israel. But leave Hamas in power? No, I'm just look, man. Release the hostage. Yes. No, can I, yeah, I, can't, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It's so unrealistic and ridiculous. So they it's get to be in power forever. I was trying to end on agreement. So I know. I you have constant excuses for never ending the occupation. No. And they still haven't gotten in a rough way because they're waiting to make sure it can be done. In <laughs> You want to kill us? You want to kill us? You started it. You started it. You started it. You want to kill us? 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 You started it. 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 You started
of darkness and all therein that may be explored. Like, 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 I'm gonna lose.